Hello everyone and welcome back to Teachers Talk Money where I help teachers master their money in order to give back to themselves. I'm so excited for today's video. I've got another budget update for you for October 2020, but this one is quite different than what you're used to seeing with my budget updates because my income is much different than it has been in the past and than I anticipated it to be for reasons that I will go into in this video. I'm filming this um, at the end of September, so right now I'm still in my apartment, but actually for the month of October, I am going to be living in Vermont um, in an Airbnb with my other teacher friend, and we're gonna be kind of teaching remotely in Vermont. And so all of the costs in this budget video are going to be what I have to spend in Vermont, um, other than the actual cost of the Airbnb, which I paid for out of my travel fund. So it's gonna be quite different for my income reasons and also because I'm going to be living a bit of a different lifestyle while I'm in a different state and living with my friend. I'm gonna show you my budget on my spreadsheet version. Um, I'll flip you over the shoulder and show you my screen. Of course, you guys can get this version at teacherstalkmoney.com slash budget, which is in the link in the description. And I also have a pen and paper version for you there if that is better for you. So without further ado, let's just jump into the numbers and I'll give you all my commentary on the different categories of my budget as we do. All right, you guys. So here we are in my October budget um, on my budget spreadsheet template. And first things first, let's take a look at the income. So as you can see, it is less than I anticipated it would be. My expected budget for 2020 um, for the rest of the school year I was thinking it would be about $2,500 for the whole month, and it is about $200 lower than that. The reason for that being, I anticipated um, the percentage that I had set aside for my paycheck to my 457B contributions to only be about $280 per paycheck. In actuality, it came out to like $360. So it's a lot more than I expected, but I think I'm going to try to keep it there. The only thing is that it makes my savings a little bit tighter, but we'll get into that in a minute. So yeah, my total income is um, $2,326 for the entire month. And this has mostly affected my savings out of anything that I have. So um, I'm keeping gifts the same because that's kind of a non-negotiable for me. I need to have a lot of gift money by the holidays to be able to kind of get gifts for my family. And of course, have some money in that account year round for other friends and family birthdays that come up. So that's staying at $60 as a non-negotiable. My travel, I wanted to do something maybe like 150, 170. And so this, I took down a lot since I'm getting less income. I'm not too worried about it now because obviously other than this trip to Vermont, right? I'm not doing, I don't have any travel planned. And so, you know, being in a pandemic and not really knowing when I can start to make big travel plans again, I'm just not worried about getting my travel fund to be super, super um, full and have a lot of money in it because I don't know when the next time I'll need to like take a plane somewhere will be. So maybe I'll adjust that, but I'm actually pretty comfortable with it being kind of low because most of the travel I'll be doing will be kind of shorter, closer by trips. I'm only putting $42 into my business and this one is probably the biggest concern to me just with how low this is because I already spend $29 a month on one of my subscriptions for my business. And so really I'm only adding like $13 extra a month to go towards my business. And that's not really a lot to save up to make any big purchases with or anything like that. So I'm comfortable with it for now because I don't have anything that I know I'll be needing to pay for with my business anytime soon but I really do want to beef that up in case I need to get a new piece of tech or a ticket to a conference. I would really like to have it there to kind of give myself permission to spend on those bigger things. And it does have a couple hundred dollars of a buffer in there already. So again, I'm comfortable with it for now, but this might be one of the motivating factors for when I maybe contribute a little bit less to my 457 straight out of my paycheck so that I can take home a little bit more pay. 
Now for summer money, this is also a non-negotiable. I have to save for my summer if I want to have the potential to not work again. So I'm going to be saving $320 per month, no matter what. And that will be enough for what I need for um, the months of July and August. Grad school is also a non-negotiable. I, like I explained in the last video, I need to be saving for this month to month now because I have so much less money to work with in my take home pay. So I need to be saving $77 over the 10 months because I have to pay about $770 for both of my courses across the course of the year. And finally, I have my car fund rebuild money. This, I just have $40. There's no like time I need this by. I just kind of want to keep putting money into it slowly so that I can cover any car breakage problems or when I need to get a new car. I have a lot of money there already. So I want to kind of rebuild it and then build it up a little bit more than I had before to also be able to cover like I said, my car breaking down or parking tickets, anything like that. So total, I'm only saving $639 a month right now, which feels kind of low, but I'm also kind of a little bit more comfortable now putting more of that money into my investments because they're growing so much more. That is kind of my focus now, now that I already have my emergency fund, I have most of my car fund um, and I have pretty beefed up other funds. So for now, I'm comfortable with it. I may end up not contributing as much to my 457 out of my paycheck just to give me a little bit more leeway with these savings goals, but I haven't decided yet. Now, I believe all my fixed costs are the same. So I pay $900 for rent, um, $82 for my car and renter's insurance. My phone bill is $45, $10 for subscriptions. And Hattie costs us about $70 a month on average. So this all comes out to a total of $1,107. And these are all pretty much non-negotiable. I mean, I could, my subscriptions are all like little things I donate to. So I could get those out, but I really, I don't think that's really worth it to me at this point for $10. So yeah, everything there is going to stay the same pretty much no matter what. And finally, we come down to my variable expenses. So I'm keeping groceries and going out at 200 because it is very difficult for me to go under that now. Sometimes I'll, I will unintentionally, and then I can kind of use whatever money I didn't use in another category or put it into savings. But in the month of September, I had a hard time sticking to these things. Not sure exactly what it was. But because of that, I really am not comfortable with bringing them down even more. Gas is staying at $30 because I think that I will be paying for like some of the gas to and from Vermont as well. And like I said, I'm not taking um, money out of my travel fund for this trip because I'm going to be in Vermont the entire month of October. So all of the costs of the trip are just going to be like costs in my regular budget. So, and I will be using gas um, when I drive up with my friend and drive back down. And then finally, I decreased my other fund. I believe it was like 170 last month or something like that. I brought it down to 150 and I'm pretty sure that should be plenty. I'll like hope, I hope so at least. So my variable costs are now at $580. And the most important thing, you can tell this is a zero based budget because the total income I'm receiving is the same as the total expenses. So every single one of my dollars has a job and a place to go in my budget. And in case you haven't seen the features of my budget before, I've also got my running totals column where I put any time I get groceries or go out and I put the amount and it totals it all up for me so I can make sure that I'm staying on track with what I plan to spend. So that is my budget for the month of October. I'm so excited to get away and be living in a different state, a totally different state than Maryland and teaching remotely with my friend and fellow teacher, Melissa, and really just taking advantage of this whole virtual learning situation um, and using that to my advantage by being able to still do my job and teach my students, but also be able to kind of do something a little bit adventurous and get out of Washington, D.C. for a little bit.
Thank you guys so much for joining me. Again, if you want to use this budget spreadsheet template, you can get it at the link in the description of this video. And I also have a pen and paper version. So if that makes more sense to you, you can get that as well. Have an amazing week, everyone. And I will see you again next week. Make sure to subscribe to my channel if you like more content about teacher money. Bye, everybody.